We are doing something we have never done before. We're busting myths with experiments so extreme, we had to bring a fire marshal in to make sure everything was safe. Too many of you have told me things that you've been taught about dieting that are just plain wrong. That's why today I am tackling five of the biggest diet myths of all time. And, my friends, I am blowing them up. <laughs> These are myths you believe, and they're making you fat, because we're going to today do some incredible experiments. I brought in my good friend, Science Bob, to help out. Hey, Welcome, yeah. Bob. Oh, great to be here. Love having you here. Do you have any diet myths that uh, have been percolating through your consciousness? I, I was always told that I eat three times a day, and my metabolism eats five times a day, and that's why I end up skinny. You think he's right? Oh, they're not sure. But today we're going to tackle all these age-old myths. Uh, you know, that metabolism is a common one we'll get to a little mm. bit later on. But first, I just started with Stephanie to see if what she believes about hunger is true. I believe that if you want to lose weight, it's really important to wait until you're hungry to eat. It's what I've always done for as long as I can remember. When I wake up in the morning, I try to wait as long as possible to eat until I'm really hungry. And eating any other way just doesn't make sense to me. Stephanie believes you should wait until you're hungry to eat if you want to lose weight. Is that a myth or the truth? Well, let's find out. Stephanie says skipping breakfast until you get hungry. In fact, it makes you hungry. Mm -hmm. but does that help you lose weight? Well, in my mind, I thought it did, but now I'm just overweight and hungry. Both. So, yeah, I'm not sure that it's working the way I want it to. Come on, we got Science Bob to help yeah, us come out. Come on back okay. here. So here's what we've got. Uh, we're going to represent hunger with this balloon. You put and, your glasses on oh, now. So then we're going to represent our food with this 320 degree below zero liquid nitrogen. So, of course, if you're eating three times a day, let's say you get some food in there with your hunger, and what is likely to happen to your hunger as you're eating? It's going to go away. Your hunger will certainly shrink, sort of like this balloon did. Yeah. But, of course, as time goes by... Oh, look at that. It comes back. Comes back. Your hunger comes back. Until you get it more food, and then it shrinks again, and, this, and then you go through that three times a day. And this process repeats itself, but what happens, and please don't do this at home for the kids and the adults, this is liquid nitrogen. You can get closer here, because I trust you. Okay, water. all right. We've got Science Bob here. Yeah. All right, now what ends up happening is when you start to avoid food too much, the problem is, instead of eating, which shrinks the hunger, if you keep starving yourself, the hunger gets worse and worse and worse, and then what ends up happening, please hold that. Science, Bob, is you end up with this huge hunger, which is consuming you. It's, it's dominating everything you think about. And unfortunately, when it's that big, there's not that much you can do about it. And it just gets so large that you start to do foolish things with your life. So let me put this hunger over here. This, you have to trust me on, because after all, that's Science, Bob, but I am a doctor. Okay. Now, your hunger's gotten so large that it consumes you. And you know what? At that point, your hunger just explodes. Did I get your attention? Now, there's brand new research that says that you just skip breakfast, just breakfast, and you will end up eating more calories throughout the day than you would have otherwise. So let me show that to you, what we just saw again. You tell me, does this look familiar to you? See that going up in flames? Yes. That's your diet. Yes. That makes perfect sense. That sounds exactly like my life because I will tend to be that person who doesn't necessarily eat, sit down and eat a salad or have a sandwich. I want the salad, I want the sandwich, and yeah. while I'm here, I'll have the dessert, because who knows when I'll be hungry again. So from that one, I want you to think about this. Right? Think about that phenomenon. That's what you want to have happen from that one. Very helpful. I hope that is. Yes, it's very much so. Thank all you. All right, and remember, I don't want you from now on waiting until you're hungry to eat, because that, my friends, is a diet myth. I recommend you eat a meal every few hours to keep you hunger in check. Next up, let's hear from Natasha, who has a common belief about metabolism and her weight that many of you share. My slow metabolism is the reason why I can't lose weight. From what I know, a fast metabolism is the way to burn calories, otherwise you stay fat. My mother's side of the family struggles with weight loss, and I believe it's because of a slow metabolism or big bone. Whether it's big bone, slow metabolism, whatever you want to call it, that is the reason why I can't lose weight. Right, now, Natasha is here. She believes a slow metabolism makes you fat. But is it a myth or is that the truth? You are convinced that it's the truth. Why is that? Yes, I'm convinced it's the truth because a slow metabolism, from what I've always heard, keeps you fat. 
And that's been my problem, my family's problem. We all struggle with weight. We also call it big bone. <laughs> but I believe <laughs> that a slow metabolism is the reason why I can't lose weight. All right, so everybody, listen, let me show you an animation. It's going to explain one reason why your metabolism might be the culprit. So come okay. on back here. So this is, imagine your neck. Come on next to me over here. Okay. And your thyroid is a butterfly-sized gland in there. And that's secreting all these hormones like it's supposed to. But if the thyroid starts to secrete less of those hormones, there's less to stimulate your heart and your lungs. So they don't quite beat as fast. They begin to slow down. And as they slow down, the rest of your body begins to slow down, including, for example, your intestines, which will now begin to accumulate a lot of material in there. They don't digest as well. They begin to back up. You get bloated. And the fat on top of there, this is where the big game is, the real action. These fat cells, they'll start sucking up everything because they're not being stimulated by the gland. They'll crowd each other out ponderously large, and they don't make much room in there as they swell up. <sighs> Sound familiar? Yes. <laughs> All right. And that's the reason why it's actually the truth that your metabolism can be responsible for the weight that you're putting on. However, before you start high-fiving and celebrating with your family <laughs> about your big bones, it's a lot rarer than you think. About 5% of people can really claim the thyroid gland is their problem. It's out there. There are things you ought to do. But for most people, it's not the main reason you can't lose weight. There are things you can do to make a difference. Simple blood tests can tell you if you've got a problem with your thyroid gland or other hormonal issues. And then beyond that, you've got to do things that you know are right already about losing weight. Fair enough? Absolutely. All right. Now let's hear Thank from Kim, you. who reached out to see if what she believed about fat was true. I've always believed that eating fat makes you fat. When I eat a salad, I feel almost like it's roughage. It's like a broom. It sweeps everything through your system. But when you eat fat, I feel like it doesn't move. It's greasy and it just lays there and it turns to fat. It's got to be true because if it's not, it's crazy. Now, Kim believes eating fat makes you fat. Is this a myth or is it the truth? You curious? Yeah, I'm curious. Have you found it to be true in your life that eating fat makes you fat? Uh, well, kind of. I mean, I try diets. I start out on a Monday with great intentions. And by Thursday or Friday, it's back to the fats. I, I give it a good try, but it doesn't seem to help me. Yeah. And has your weight gone up? Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, come on back. <laughs> we got three major components of food. Science Bob's going to help us explain these to you. Yeah, I thought... Uh... Yeah, we'd use a simple kind of acid-base reaction for this, kind of your classic vinegar baking soda here. So we've got a bottle here that represents your carbs and protein, okay. which is in food. And then uh, we're going to mix it with a chemical and see if energy is produced or fat is produced. And, well, the bigger this gets, the more energy you get. Now, Keith here to remember is that carbs and protein, when you put them in your body, they're converted all to energy. And that's what you thought might happen, isn't it? Well, yeah. Now, what do you think happens when you dump fat into your body? Um, what I feel like it does is slow me down. Um, I have no energy, and it just stays there. Well, let's find out. I pour fat into your body, and you notice what's happening here? You're also building up energy in your body. In fact, you're converting all that fat to energy, just like you did with the carbs and the protein. And eventually, it's the same thing. That's why... Despite your beliefs, you're stepping away. Do you not trust me? <laughs> no, I trust you. <laughs> it's actually a myth that eating fat makes you fat. There is no difference whatsoever. Fat's an essential nutrient. It actually helps you with satiety. It'll keep you full. There are many reasons you ought to be taking it into your body. I would recommend that one-third of all the food you eat be from fat, and two-thirds could be from carbs and protein. Split it out, but eat the healthy kind of fat, like from okay. olive oil. Want to take us home with you? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, up next, does drinking water make you lose weight? What about coffee? We set up an experiment to see what you think. Before today's show, we asked our entire studio audience to weigh in on which beverage makes you lose weight faster. Water, coffee, or both? I voted for coffee because it speeds up your metabolism. Water cleanses you. Does drinking water shrink your waistline? Does coffee help you shed pounds? Or could they both work? Is it a myth or the truth? So here are the results from the experiment. You guys want to hear them? Yes. Yeah. See how smart you are. We do have the brightest audience in television. 39%, almost 40% of you believe drinking water makes you lose weight. 15% of you believe drinking coffee makes you lose weight. A whopping 46% of you believe both made you lose weight. But is it a myth or the truth that drinking water, coffee, or both can make you lose weight? Kathy said... You actually believe that both can help you. Why is that? I do, Dr. Oz. I believe that drinking lots of water will help flesh out the fat cells. 
and drinking lots of coffee will increase my energy to burn more calories. Well, it, it makes sense. You want to know the answer? Yes. You'll all be surprised to know this. The entire audience, you're all wrong. Wow. Science Bob, let's explain why this important reality is true. First of all, let's start with what happens when you drink water. Come sure. back, Kathy. Okay. Stand up my side. So if you think about it, our body is actually about 60% water, and uh, our brain alone is 70% water. And you need that to run your metabolism, to give you energy, to fill your cells and all that. But if your body has enough and you drink water, and it doesn't need that extra water, well, then it just pretty much goes through, fulfills all the cells, and anything that's left over that doesn't need, well, that makes its way down and, of course, evacuates the body. It does. There you have it right there. Wow. The urine, artfully created by our team. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to point this out again. All these other cells are doing things, but if they have all the water they need, you're not helping out much by taking extra water. In fact, you truly are just peeing it out. So it doesn't make any sense to push yourself to drink more than that purely to lose weight. However, to make one little caveat here, if you replace sugary beverages with water, well, of course, you're going to end up consuming less calories at the end of the day, so you're going to lose weight. But it's not the water alone that's doing it. Okay. Now let's turn to coffee. You busted one myth. Come on over here. So we've got a little different demonstration. Science Bob, coffee acts as a stimulant. What does it do for us? Well, here, you're going to want these on. Okay. Let's say this fire kind of represents our coffee. And as it goes into our body, it, of course, creates energy, in this case, as fire. Okay. So, so we got our coffee going here. So we got our coffee going here, and it's burning energy and burning energy. Now, let's say uh, the energy, uh, you add cream and sugar to it. And then if it... Uh, as the energy burns out, you might get another cup of coffee. In this case, we're going to add it to a little liquid oxygen there, and it reignites. But what often happens with coffee, especially if you add cream and sugar to it, is... It goes in there. You lose everything. There's no benefit because you got all the calories from this anyway. But, but, it does have a short-term benefit. So what happens next time you have, take a little cup of coffee? Well, you get another cup of coffee. It ignites. If you keep going, of course, then you get the jitters. Yes. Does that ever happen to you? I, I limit myself to one or two cups a day. And is there cream and sugar in those no. two cups? No. All right. I just use a little bit of milk. Is that okay? <laughs> well, milk is uh, okay. Yeah, listen, I love coffee, and I think lots of health benefits, but you should not drink coffee just to lose weight because it doesn't have that benefit. Because the bottom line is once the caffeine rush is gone, we saw there was no benefit to you. It only is helping when it's burning. And you've got to keep replenishing, keep replenishing to have that impact. That's why I think it's a myth that drinking coffee will help you lose weight in a reasonable fashion. I'm sorry. Okay. There are many other things we can do, though. What may be the biggest diet myth of all time? It's something that Faven believes, along with so many of you watching. Faven, what do you believe to be a truth? Well, since I've turned 30, I've been focused a little bit more on age, and I feel like the older I get, the more weight I'm going to start packing on. It's, I feel like it's inevitable that it's going to be an uphill battle. All right, so again, Faven believes that gaining weight is inevitable as you age, which many of the folks here, I'm sure at home, believed to be true, but is it a myth? With the help of Science Bob, let's find out. Come on back here. So as folks get less active, Science Bob, what happens? Well, this will represent, let's say, our muscle. And as we get less active... You'll definitely want these for this. <laughs> and again, folks, don't do this at home. Unless you invite Science Bob over first. Oh, sure, I'll come over. Okay. So your muscle's shrinking. Remember, the muscle used to be so big. As it shrinks, as you get older, you make more of this stuff, which is fat. And then what happens? Well, oh, <laughs> it disappeared. The fat just goes away. It goes away. evaporates. <laughs> All right. Let's make some more here. All right, we got plenty of fat here, unfortunately. We got plenty of fat to go around. All right, so, so now, what happens then? Well, you know, what you have to do, of course, is burn off the fat. And in this case, we filled those bubbles with methane gas, so. So if you're going to burn off the fat, the first thing you have to do, if you want this to happen, ooh. Nice. You're going next. <laughs> is, is that you have to become more active. Right? Because unfortunately, it is a myth. It's a myth that weight gain is inevitable as you age. There are two things that counteract it. One, let's demonstrate again, is to gain uh, a little bit of muscle mass. That'll burn off. The other, if you've done the weight training you're supposed to do and have some more muscle mass, are you ready? We'll do this together now. Don't burn right. his hands. Okay. The other thing we need to do is cut calories. Will it work? It does. But the question is, how many calories do you have to cut? The rule of thumb is for every 10 years after age 40, okay. 
you have to cut about 50 calories out of your day. So put your hands in the water here. Okay. Let's see if you're going to be able to do this. All right. All right. Put this here. All okay. right. Science, by the way, anything special here? Yeah, okay, there we go. I'm not going to do it to you. <laughs> you want to do it to me? Sure. Can I, can I trust you? Sure. All right, Science, Bob. Nice and wet. Nice and wet. There we Don't go. Don't get my arms or any parts. I am a surgeon. <laughs> There's not much stuff here. Are you sure this yeah. is a good idea? Is it a good I'm idea? Just lighting Dr. Oz's hands on fire. Should what could go not? wrong? So the soap? Yeah, yeah. There's no soap on my hands even. Are you sure? Yeah. Nah, sure. I'm not going to do it. I forget how. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> Very good thanks to Science Bob. He has magical hands. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.